Hey, this is Connor with Congruent X, and today I'm gonna show you some best practices for Canvas apps. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is when to use a collection and when to not use a collection. So we have a lot of different options uh, when we're showing data in Canvas apps, but two of the most popular um, are connecting directly to a database via a connection or use a collection and display that collection. Tip number one is only use a collection if you absolutely have to. So there's a couple reasons we should try to avoid using collections if at all possible. Uh, performance, delegation, and updating. So what we're looking at here is we have two galleries. We have one on the left using the direct connection. So if we look at the items, I'm just referencing straight to the accounts connection here to common data service. And we have on the right, I'm creating a collection and then we're displaying the collection in the gallery. So if we actually go to play the app and I refresh and you'll see that they pop up at about the same time. Now I'm going to change my delegation settings and we'll, we'll get more into that in a second, but I just want to change it and notice the performance difference. So the gallery on the left is significantly faster than the gallery on the right. And so what we're seeing here is anytime you can connect directly to your connector or your database, always do that. It's always gonna be faster and I'll tell you why. In these top left and top right corners, I'm counting how many rows are in the gallery. You'll notice in the direct connection, it defaults to only pull 100 rows and as I scroll through the gallery, it will dynamically pull more data. See, 200 rows. I'll keep going. 300 rows, right? And in the gallery on the right, we can see every row is already here. No matter how much I scroll, it's not gonna pull more data in. And so this performance difference actually gets worse and worse with the larger the data size. So, so there are 1,609 accounts in my database. This problem gets amplified with larger databases. You know, I mean, it's very typical to have, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of different rows in databases. And so let's talk about the delegation limit. So you'll notice right now I'm pulling 1,609 rows and my delegation is set to 2,000. So we've, we're not bumping up against that delegation limit. However, if we go back to the way it was when I first loaded the app, you'll see it only pulls 500 rows and that's because that's what the delegation limit is. So any function that is non-delegatable will be limited to your delegation limit. So we can dig into that a little bit more in the future, but for this video, that's about as far as I'm gonna go. So the problem then becomes, so what if my database is larger than 2000 and I need to interact with that data? So you then have to collect the first 2000, then collect the next, the next, the next, and you can see how performance just gets exponentially worse with larger databases. So you're always gonna have better performance if you connect directly to your databases. The final reason uh, to avoid using um, collections is for updating. On this gallery on the left, if I wanted to update a record, I would select the record, patch whatever columns I changed, and actually what happens is you don't have to refresh that data connection. So Power Apps is smart enough to know that if we patch to a data source, it's actually gonna dynamically pull that new data in and update my gallery, right? What happens with a collection, if we go and patch that record, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna update from the data source, right? But the collection itself, the display, is not going to update. So now we have an extra step. We have to patch the collection. So we have to, one, patch the database, to patch the collection. So first tip, always directly connect to your data sources whenever possible. So tip number two is to always reference the schema name of a field, not the display name. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, let's look at the account name field. So we have the display name, which is account name. And then we have the schema name, which here it's just called name, but behind the scenes it's called schema name. Okay, so if I open this field, 
Notice I can change the display name, but the schema name cannot. Like this gallery is referencing account name, the display name. But let's say somebody were to go in and change it to company name, your app is now broken. It doesn't know what field to reference. So one of the things that I really wish they would change about Canvas apps is when you're typing in names, it should autofill schema names, not display names. Like if I start typing in name, you'll see the only thing that comes up is account name, the display name. But if I leave it because I know the schema name is name, it actually works. So always, always reference the schema name, not the display name, or it, you'll move from your environment to a different environment or someone will make a change behind the scenes and your app's gonna break. So the third tip is to always use the tablet layout for an app if you ever think you want it to be on a tablet. And what I mean by that is when you go to create a Canvas app, you have the choice of a phone layout or a tablet layout. Most people choose the phone layout, but if you're ever going to have that app resize to a tablet or desktop size, pick the tablet layout and I'll show you why. There's two reasons. The first reason has to do with the way the Create Power Apps works, right? So we have the concept of the app size and the screen size. The screen size you can change in the app, um, but the app size you cannot. That is a setting. The only way you can change the app size is by actually launching the app, right? If you launch it in this window, you technically can change the app size. So to show you this, what I've done here is I have this background set to parent.height and parent.width, parent being the screen size, the screen's width and screen's height, and then I have the slider that is controlling the screen's width. So effectively, we can see what's gonna happen in real time to our app as that app size changes. And you'll notice when I bring this small, our screen size is um, our screen size is about 460 pixels right now, but you'll see this white box, and that white box is our app size. You can't change that. That's in our settings. So you can see here we're defaulting to 16 by 9. We can customize that, but I'll show you what happens when we do that. So if we change this to portrait, apply you'll see what happened. All of my sizing changed, right? It, it, it didn't respond. It, it totally got rid of what I had, right? This, the height of this background was set to parent.height and now it's a static value. So if we go back and change it back, let's, you know, let's see if it, if it changed, if it fixes it, it does not, right? We're still seeing 768. If I go back to that portrait, I'll show you why I say to use a, um, a tablet layout. Right now we're seeing the phone layout, more or less, it's a little squash, but uh, we're, we're more or less seeing the layout of the phone. Now if we stretch it out, and let's see what it looks like if we're in a desktop mode. Let's say I wanna add a button on this, the right side of this screen when it's in a desktop size. Watch what happens when I try to actually move this over and try to get an eye for where it's gonna be. I can't move past the app size. So I have to manually code it over where I want it. So we've got it roughly in the right position. Let's, let's say I wanted to drag it in a closer spot. I can't. I can interact with the button. I could, you know, I could launch whatever on select is in there, but I can't actually move the component around. I can't move anything that is past this white box, the app size. I can't interact with, I have to, I can't even select it to change the code. I have to go to the tree view and select that, um, that icon to actually change where it is. So that's the reason why I say use a tablet because it extends your app size. It's really easy to shrink it and see your, um, your phone sizing and you can still interact with everything. So let's put it back in the landscape. Now notice I can drag this where I need it, right? But again, if I extend past, so our white line is there, or our white box is there, if we extend past that, I'm not gonna be able to drag it past that. So that's why I say, if you ever intend on making your app dynamically sized, always use the tablet layout because you're gonna be able to 
e more easily kind of set things up and see roughly where you want them to be. Um, it's just a lot easier to work with. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and or go to our website at congruentx.com. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.